Hello React Finland. My name is Manuel Matusovic. I'm a front-end developer from Vienna. I work for the city of Vienna and I'm specialized in HTML, CSS and accessibility. If you're interested in these topics, follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is mmatuso. The slides for this talk are already online. If you want to follow along on your laptop, it's bit.ly slash react minus tips. I have a confession to make. I'm not a React developer. I'm really sorry. But today I'm here to give you tips on how to make your React apps better. And um, I want to help you reach more people. The title of this talk is 12 Tips for More Accessible React Apps. At the time when I picked the title, I didn't know how much time I'm going to have. So I just picked an arbitrary number. I thought, ah, 12 is going to be fine. As it turns out, I only have 20 minutes, so let's get started with my eight tips for accessible React apps. <laughs> let's. Tip number one, create a, re uh, create a sound document outline. And what I mean by that is that if you have a document, you, sh you should start with an H1, ideally uh, an H1 with the title of your page. And if you have a large section, section being a thematic groups of, a group of contents, then you want to start it with an H2. And if you have a subsection, H3, H4, and so on. And if you have another large section, you go back to the H2. And this is re really important for many reasons. One of them being that uh, screen reader users, so people who use a software to read content on a page, don't necessarily just serve a page by reading content from top to bottom, but they have different ways of navigation. And one of these ways of navigation is navigation by headings. So here I'm in Safari, I'm using VoiceOver, which is the built-in screen reader that comes with macOS, and I'm listing all the headings on this page. Headings menu, heading level one, React Finland. Heading level two, MCs. Heading level two, sponsors. Heading level three, gold sponsors. Heading level three, silver sponsors. Heading level three, bronze sponsors. So what you just heard was uh, the content of each heading and also the level, which is really important because this gives users context and makes them understand the page hierarchy. So that's why it's really important that the document outline is sound. Now, that's something that's sometimes hard to get right because a H2, for example, in a component might make sense in one place, but when it's nested in another place, it might be wrong. Tenon UI, which is a, a, an accessible React components library, has a solution for that. So they have this heading component and uh, head, uh, heading H component. If you put it in your page, it will be automatically transformed to an H1. And if you want to create, create a section, you use the level boundary component and put another heading component in there, and this will automatically be an H2. And if you have another subsection, you put another level boundary component in there, and the heading in there will be an H3. So that's really cool. And what you get in this specific example in the end is this, an H1, H2, H3, and another H1. And if you move it around, it will still be well structured. There are different ways of testing the document outline. One of my favorite ways is using a browser extension called Totally. It will add a nice little icon in your browser. If you click it, another icon will show in the bottom left corner of your browser. And then you can annotate headings. And it will show you if there are errors in your document outline. And it will also list all the headings and show you your document outline. You can see on this website, it starts with an H1. Then there are a lot of H4s with recommendations, I think, an H2 followed by an H4 and so on. So that's a nice way of testing your document outline and you see how your page is structured. So in summary, create a sound document outline because it gives your document structure. It helps screen reader users with navigation and also it's important for SEO. My second tip is hide content correctly. I'm on the React Finland website here, and uh, you can see that it's very well structured. It starts with an, with an H1, followed by an H2, and so on. It's almost perfect. There's just one thing I'd want to improve. You can see that the headings for the sponsors are H2, so gold sponsor, silver sponsor, bronze sponsor, and so on. But they should be grouped by an H2 with the label sponsors. It would make sense to have and H2 sponsors, and this heading should be H3s. Like, it's a minor, minor thing, but it's something that you could improve. I guess it's missing, the H2 is missing, because it had, hasn't been considered in the design either. Because maybe if you look at the page, you don't need this extra heading, because the, the design itself already communicates this information that this is about sponsors. 
But the design shouldn't dictate the outline of our document, our content should. So what we want here is we want a heading that's hidden from sighted users, but accessible to screen reader users and other machines like um, search engines, for example. In CSS and HTML, there are different ways of hiding content. For example, display none or visibility hidden or the hidden attribute in HTML. But none of those is suitable for accessible hiding because if you apply display none or visibility hidden or the hidden attribute to an element, it will be removed from the accessibility tree and that makes it inaccessible to screen reader users. So it's gone, like it doesn't exist. So we can't use this. What we need is a little bit more a combination of uh, several properties that make sure that content is still accessible to screen reader users, but not visible to sighted users, and also not accessible uh, with the keyboard. And if we add an H2 with the sponsors label and apply this class, it's accessible to machines and to screen reader users, but not visible uh, visually. And you can use this technique, technique for several things. For example, if you have a button with an icon, with just an icon, and you want to make sure that this is accessible to uh, everyone. Um, if you add a SVG, you can't use the alt, alt attribute that you can use with images. And one way of making a button accessible is just adding a span with this visually hidden class, and then um, it's accessible to screen reader users because safe will be read out, and if a sighted user um, sees it, they may, um, uses it, they may see a floppy disk or whatever icon you're using. You can create a tiny component from that that does exactly that uh, and call it visually hidden, for example, and just wrap your items that you want to hide from uh, users um, in, a, in a component. Or you can use an existing component uh, from the Reach UI React library that does exactly that. So in summary, don't use display none and visibility hidden or the hidden attributes if you want to make sure that everyone has access to the content. And keep in mind that every item on your page needs some kind of textual representation. So if you have a button and there's just an icon in there, it also must have a text equivalent. Tip number three, and Andre is going to love this tip. Use button if you need a button. And here's why. It might be tempting to use divs as a button because this divs come with less default styling and it's easier to, to apply CSS to just a div. But there's a huge, huge difference when it comes to user experience and accessibility. What you can see here is a button. I'm using the button element in HTML and I'm uh, adding a click event to this button. If I click it, you can see an alert pop up. If I use the keyboard and focus it and I press enter, the alert pops up. If I focus it again, press space, again, the alert. That's pretty awesome because it's accessible to mouse users, to keyboard users, and to screen reader users. Now, the same button, it looks exactly the same, but the difference here is now it's a div and not a button element. I click the button, the alert pops up, I try to focus it, nothing happens because a div is not focusable with the keyboard. Of course, I can add the tab index attribute and make it focusable, but if I press enter in space, nothing happens because I only get these key events for free with the click event if I use a button. So, buttons are focusable by default. You don't have to do anything more to make them focusable. They come with key events for free and they're semantic. If you use a div, that means nothing to a screen reader user. It just says generic text. But if you use a button, the screen reader will tell the user, hey, this is a button. That's something you can click. So please use buttons, HTML buttons. Sorry, Andre. Tip number four, use fragments to avoid invalid HTML. If a component, and I already mentioned I'm not a React developer, if a component returns mul multiple elements, they must be wrapped in another element, in a single element, for example, a div. And this might cause invalid HTML, or it might even break your uh, design. Now, React introduced in React 16.2, as far as I know, uh, a nice little feature called Fragments. And fra Fragments let you group a list of children without adding extra nodes to the DOM, and this is really nice. And sometimes it's even um, mandatory. Let's say we have a simple component like this, a table component. There is a table and a table row, and then inside this table row, I have a columns component. And 
the columns component looks like this. We have two cells, and since there isn't just one cell, but two, we need a wrapper element, and I'm using a div here. What's rendered in a browser is this, a table with a table row and a div. But a div is not a valid descendant for table row, only td and uh, th. So we don't want that. We want to avoid invalid HTML because it might break the design and also might, it might be bad for accessibility. So in order to fix this in React, we just replace the div wrapper with this react.fragment wrapper. And what happens then is that the component only returns the contents, not the wrapper. So this is what the table then looks like. This is much nicer. So in summary, uh, uh, summary, fragments help you write valid HTML. They also reduce bloat. You have less um, unnecessary nodes in your DOM. And there's also a shorter syntax for using fragments. You can see it here on the right side of the screen. If you want more information about fragments, check out the uh, React docs online. Tip number five, take care of focus management. React applications continuously modify the DOM at runtime, and sometimes this leads to focus being lost or um, focus being on unexpected places. In order to fix this, we need to manage focus manually. Here's a short demo. You can see a button here, and it says show modal. If I click this button, a modal window is going to pop up. Now, what I would expect if I use a keyboard is that if I focus this button, I press enter, that I can access the content within the modal window. Now, let's see what happens. I focus the button, I click enter, I click tab, and focus is behind the modal window. Now, why is this happening? Well, tab order, so the order in which a, screen, uh, a keyboard user jumps from one item to another item, follows DOM order. And I um, appended this modal window to the very bottom of the page. So what I would what would need to do is to tap through every single item in the page until I can reach the modal window, and that sucks. So we need to fix this. Now what I want is that if I focus this button, I want focus to jump in the modal window. Something like this. Focus, enter, and now I'm in the modal window. That's really nice. Of course, if the user closes this modal window, I want to make sure that focus goes back from the modal to the button where it was before. Now, in, to, to get this working in React, um, you have to create a ref using react.createRef, and then you have to attach the ref to a DOM element, in this case the button, because the button is the first item in the modal window, and uh, using the ref attribute, and then um, we have access to a reference to the node, and we can use the raw DOM API and focus it. That's a very simple example, of course, you, you can make this better and much nicer, and, and there are some more things to consider, but th this is the basics for uh, using Focus in React. And it's really important, I'm here on the WISE website, and you can see that when you open the page, uh, a modal window pops up, and I'm going to press tab to try and close it, nothing happens. I press escape, nothing happens. I press tab because I'm going nuts, I'm pressing, 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 nothing happens. And then all of a sudden you can see that the page is moving. Why? Well, because focus is in the back of this modal window. There's no chance for me as a, as a keyboard user to close this modal window. It's completely inaccessible. I can't, can't use this site. So in summary, focus management is important. It's essential for keyboard users and screen reader users and take advantage of refs in React to manage focus. Of course, that's a bit complicated. Um, you shouldn't use focus everywhere, only in, in certain um, in certain components, there are already components that uh, come with accessible, I don't know, modals or dialogues um, out of the box, like Ali Dialog, um, and there's more on the React.js website. Tip number six, make notifications accessible to everyone. Here is uh, my first React app I wrote. Um, there is a button, and you can click this button, and when you click it, uh, you will see a notification that tells you that everything has been saved successfully. And I'm using, again, VoiceOver here, the screen reader on macOS, and this is what happens. Save button. You are currently on a button inside web content. To click this button... Do you see what's wrong with this application? I click it, and I only have visual feedback. I only see that the contents have been saved, but I don't hear it. The app doesn't communicate this information to the screen reader. 
So what we have to do here is we have to make this notification accessible. Right now it's just a div with some styling and we have to transform this simple div into a live region. And if we have a live region, then this div will watch for changes and if there are text changes, it will communicate this information to the screen reader. In order to make this div a live region, we add the role attribute with the value alert. And now let's try the application again. React app, web content. Save, save successfully. You are currently on a button. Inside that wasn't loud enough probably, but now I click the button and the application said saved successfully. Because now it watches the div and if there are changes to the div, to the content of the div, it announces change. Use role alert or role status to create live regions. The difference between alert and status is that if you apply role alert, it will interrupt the screen reader if it's announcing something else. But if you use status, it will wait until the screen reader finishes announcing and then it will read the message. So it's a little bit more polite. And please only use live regions for important information. Don't put it on the body or on every single um, component or element in your page. Just, just where there are significant changes that you have to communicate to the user. Again, there are already accessible components out there, like the alert component by Reach UI. There are, is other stuff on GitHub. And there's a nice article called ARIA Live Regions in React by Almero Stein. Tip number seven, announce page changes. And this is really, really important because it's about routing. If you use a screen reader on a server-side rendered page um, and you click a link, the whole page will reload and the screen reader will announce the title of the page and focus is on the document. With single page applications, that's a bit different, well, because we only have a single page. Here's a demo. I have three links, there is some page content, and I have uh, the same links in the footer. If I now tap to the About button and I click it, this is what happens. Visited link, About. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press Control, Option, Space. So, I focus the link, the screen reader announces the title of this link is About. The page changes, but the screen reader does not provide the information that the change has happened. So this is the first issue. Keep in mind that screen reader users usually don't see what's on the screen because most screen reader users are blind. So you have maybe close your eyes and listen to it again. Let's do this. Close your eyes and listen to it. Visited link about. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. So you only get the information that there is a link, but you don't get the information that the content has changed. That's the first issue, and the second issue is focus is still on the navigation, but we want to move focus from the link we clicked to the document or maybe to the, to the page content. Why um, is a bit more um, clearly visible in, if I move down to the footer. I'm going to tap from the top navigation to the bottom navigation. And I'm on the about visited, page now. Visited, link, visited, link, I click blog. blog. You are currently on Visited link about. You are current. The page has changed. I was on the about page. I clicked the link, but nothing happened. The screen reader didn't inform me that the page has changed and also focus stayed where it was. So the page didn't move. I had to scroll up to see that this page change has happened. All right, let's try to fix this. Again, we create a ref. This time to access a reference to the section. So the, I'm using the section elements to, to display my page content. Um, then again, I add the ref attribute, I pass this section um, ref, and I also add the tab index attribute with a value of minus one, because a section is by default not focusable. Similar to a div, I can't focus it using the keyboard. But if I add this tab index attribute with a value of zero or minus one, it's focusable. Then I again use the focus method in JavaScript to focus it, and while I'm at it, I also change the document title. Now what happens now is that VoiceOver will announce the whole region, so it will focus this page region and it will read out everything, the title of the page and everything that's inside there. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it and other experts in accessibility are also not sure. What I prefer to do is to be as close to the native behavior as possible. So what I want is to only read out the page title and here's a way to do it. 
I take the heading, I add an ID to the heading, and then I reference this heading in the section by using ARIA labeled by. And now I'm giving this whole section a label. I'm naming it. And I'm naming it with the content of the heading. So the name for this section is now about. And if we look in, at our application now, it works like this. Visited link about about region. You are currently on a region inside web content. To exit this web area, press control option shift visited link visited link blog region. You are current visited visit visited link ab about region. So now you can hear that the screen reader announces the name of the link. And if I click the link, focus shifts from the link to the page content. And it says it's a region. This is happening because I'm using the section element. And it says the, the name of the region, region is about because about is the title of this page. Much, much better. I was using React Router here, and I made it a bit, a bit more accessible, or actually um, accessible in the first place. But there are other routers out there that come with accessibility out of the box, like Reach Router, for example. Um, it it's, has been made by Ryan Florence. I think he's famous in the React community, so, or at least some people know him, um, because of his work uh, with routers. You can check it out. So announce page changes, again, use ref to manage focus, and if necessary, make items focusable using the tab index attributes and the value minus one. And my last tip for today is test your React code automatically. Don't get me wrong, we just heard it. Um, automatic testing isn't everything you definitely have to test manually. So uh, a nice way of testing manually is, for example, using the tab key. Try to use the last thing you've built in React without a mouse. Just use the tab key and the shift tab key and enter and space and arrows and see if you can use it. Um, but manual testing is one thing and automatic testing is a great first step. And one way to automatically test in React is using React X. It uses the X-Core accessibility testing library and um, it tests the rendered DOM for accessibility issues and it shows errors in the console of your dev tools. So um, you add it to your, to, to your website, uh, to your app, you make sure that it only runs in development, and um, you use this function, you pass React, React DOM, and a timings delay in milliseconds, and what happens then is that you see some errors. For example, here, um, we can see there is one serious error and some moderate errors, which is quite a lot if you think there's just, consider there's just a button, um, it says the HTML element must have a lang attri 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 attribute. Yeah. So, automatic tests help you notice low-hanging fruits, so something that things that you definitely must fix, and it's just the first step. You ha definitely have to do manual testing. Check out React X and the ESLint plugin JSXA11Y for accessibility linting. Thank you so much. <laughs>